Sweet Mary Jane is my vice. Your poison, on the other hand, is and always has been the destroyer of worlds. You're out of touch, and I would like you to consider an offer. It's the kind of Guy Ritchie project that I enjoy uh, the most that he does. Lock, stock, and snatch. It's those small crime worlds with different very idiosyncratic characters who are the masters of their own universe, or at least seem to be or believe they are. Um, it was that that world when I read the script. That's why I said, like, okay, if I'm going to work with Guy, this is the mm. the milieu, the the, the palette I want to work with him in. Yeah, I mean, it, it felt like a dream come true for me because I, <coughs> you know, I felt like looking back on, you know, the years that I was, you know, aspiring, you know, to do this for for a job. I Lockstock was like one of the ultimate films for me, and so to work, you know, to have that opportunity to work with Guy was was incredible. Um, and in that particular genre. I mean, my, my audition really was going around the guy's house and having a whiskey with him, yeah. you know? And I, I think he's one of those directors that when he, when he clicks with, with an actor, because he knows how he works and, and that's, you know, getting onto set and everything absolutely changing. So you need to be, a, be pliable and he needs to be able to see that he can work with you. Mm. Mm. Um, for me, it was, you know, after, after that sort of morning, it was just like, man, it, was, it, it would be a dream come true to be on the project. So, um, yeah, I was happy to be aboard. I would say that he was slightly more eccentric <laughs> than the, we was on The Man From U.N.C.L.E. on this. He was pretty eccentric on that with his private dining table with a white cloth being brought to the set and delicious food at a strange hours of the day. And he was dressed then head to foot in tweed in Rome in 80 degrees. And on this one, he has a, did you go into his trailer? Yeah, yeah. He has a beautiful trailer. <clears throat> it looks like a normal one from the outside. And on the inside, it's um, a log cabin somewhere in Canada with a wood burning stove. And full of people, people, I, people I, I don't know who they were. <laughs> Not associated with the film in I, any I way. I think so, no. Yep. No, he rolls, he rolls deep, old guy. Um, for me, the process is always um, kind of unexpected and um, can be magical, can be very, very challenging. He's very mercurial guy, so something that he's absolutely in love with the day before and you'll say, so I'm going to go home and prep the scene tonight. Is there anything that you're thinking might not work or you're going to want to change it? No, I absolutely love it. And then you'll show up the next day and say, you know what? I looked at that scene again. It's terrible. We're going to rewrite everything right now. You think, okay, this, uh, let's see where this goes. But, you know, he has an unbelievable ability to work in real time. You know, I think he's uh, extraordinary. I mean, wherever his um, inability to prep which is pretty significant. Uh, his ability to work uh, very efficiently in real time is pretty extraordinary. So it just keeps you on your toes, right? Yeah. I want you to play a game with me, Ray. I don't want to play a game. Oh, please. No. I said play a game with me, Ray. Man. Right. Lovely. A gentleman never tells. I think for some of us, you're just born a gentleman. Uh, <laughs> I think it's hard. And others not. It's harder for Charlie. Isn't yeah, it? it is. It is, darling. Thank you, thank you for, thank you for acknowledging that. I there are a lot of gents on this set. Yeah. You know, Guy's a real, you know, he's a real gent. He's always in a snappy suit for work. Um, I mean, they were all very <laughs> chill. Now, I can't be specific about the heroes and zeros, but our protagonist is a hungry animal. <laughs> no. No, it didn't. <laughs> what happened on that set? Oh, he, uh, he, he grabbed my prop joint and put a snoop right there. <laughs> <laughs> and we to do whatever, an eight minute scene till that joint was gone. And right at the end, I was like, oh. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so the next eight hours were quite entertaining in a, diff in a different way, where none of the dialogue that was written was said. Wow. If you smell smoke, it's because there's a fire. So you're gonna have to stamp that out quickly. It was great. I mean, that scene was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and on the on page, it you know it was something that I was really excited about doing. You know, I think the dialogue was, you know, it's so punchy and there's this sort of kind of ping pong going on between them. 
Um, but it, it was great. But we weren't sort of expecting, we didn't know how it would sort of unfold. You know, it was in the script that, you know, he eventually, you know, she, she runs out of the tiny bullets and he attacks her. But we didn't really know where it was going. So they brought on the stunt doubles who then were like throwing each other across the, <laughs> the room. And Henry and I were like, surprised. oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's going to play out. Um, but it's, you know, with Guy, it's very, you know, it changes a lot. So you, you really sort of have to be on your toes and um, it's a lot of fun. You know, I, for an actor, I, you know, I, I'm sure you both agree. I think it's, it, it, it felt really refreshing, actually, to do something that wasn't so regimented and kind of on, the, mm -hmm. on every single yeah, word. Yeah, very agile. You know, you, it, it changes and actually that it, it's a real challenge as an actor, you know, to just kind of do it on the spot. Um, it was a lot of fun. Our antagonist explodes on the scene like a millennial firework and has indirectly started a war. We're about halfway through. We're, uh, we just moved, we company moved to uh, Japan. Um, it's an origin story. Um, I can't say too much about it, but it, it really delves into the character behind the mask and, and really sort of establishes who he is as a person. Uh, which, which I think people were hungry for. And um, that's such an iconic character. You kind of want to know more, not, you know, not just the weapon that he is, but, but why is he the way that he sort of became. Um, and Robert Schwenke, my, my director, is, has, is such a Japanese sort of cinemaphile that he's integrated a lot of sort of Kurosawa's kind of, um, I suppose, flavor and, and uh, I suppose creating something that we're not used to on screen. And I think it's, it's a far throw from the general sort of um, kind of superhero movie and something a lot more sort of based in reality. So it's, it's, it's a special one. Man. These people are going to clean house and you are part of that house. In the jungle. The only way a lion survived. I did know that. And I'm extremely proud. I know, 100% red ones. And this, you know, having had, I think, 8% on Rotten Tomatoes with one film that I shan't mention, it was, it was a lovely uh, boost. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty What's good. What's the lowest you've had on the tomato meter? <laughs> I dare not go on to check. I do know that uh, Guy and I's First film together was twenty three percent. That's yeah, that's pretty which is, shit. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty <laughs> unfresh. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, right. we don't blame you though. You just compile the data. It's hard not to blame you, and you know, feel very resentful of the, your site's uh, ability to shine a very bright light on our failures. But um, we don't. So, thank you for for your service. <laughs>